So before we get started, I just want to show you, look at my uh, sweatshirt. Isn't it awesome and amazing? Uh, I adore it. Also, it's snowing in Seattle today. That never happens. It's a Christmas miracle. You can even see it out there. But with that having been said, uh, something a little bit darker to talk about briefly here. If you hadn't heard, uh, this morning I woke up to uh, a couple messages from people telling me that Queen Turf herself, JK Rowling, had retweeted me. And um, yeah, uh, that's uh, not exactly a very fun way to start off the day. Now, we've seen this a bunch of times. J.K. Rowling will retweet a trans person or someone supporting trans people because her Twitter timeline is just all about trans people at this point. And it will eventually lead to a ton of harassment and targeted uh, attacking of that person. She knows that this is what her audience will do. It's basically how Twitter works at this point, especially since Elon Musk has made it more and more of a platform that is okay with transphobia and hatred. Um, and so, sadly, that is what happened to me. I definitely woke up with to a lot of messages in my inbox from people that were less kind and even more so in my mentions um, and people sort of replying to my tweets and things like that. Um, and it was um, not very great. Also, and this is just a random aside, but uh, I shared a picture of my cat, Newt, because uh, he's running around here somewhere uh, just to make people smile in the face of J.K. Rowling's bigotry. And like, there were turfs that like attacked me for loving cats and attacked my cat. Like, what miserable people attack cats? That's just, that's just sad. Also should be noted, her take was super weird because my tweet was like, probably one of the kindest tweets that I could have ever done about JK Rowling. I've been very clear in a lot of my content that JK Rowling and gender critical ideology uh, is incredibly harmful to trans people for numerous reasons. It spread lies. I'll let you look at the other videos that I've linked down below that go into that. Uh, but my tweet wasn't really even directly about any of that. It was quite literally just saying that because JK Rowling is so anti-transgender and because she has used her continued platform as the head of the Harry Potter franchise to promote that transphobia and also the fact that she continues to use the fact that Harry Potter stays relevant um, as a justification for her uh, transphobia in the media quite literally having said numerous times that like while well, people are still buying my stuff so must, they must agree with me in my anti-transgender views um, which is absolutely horrible and, and is not actually actually the case many people sadly don't care about trans issues enough to like even be aware uh, of any of that stuff as they continue to buy Harry Potter merch um, which is sad but it's its own whole discussion but is not a direct endorsement of her hateful and bigoted views but anyway she takes it that way and uses it and wields it that way and so my take simply was that uh if you wish to support trans people you can't continue to support the harry potter franchise at the very least uh while jk uh, rowling is in charge of it maybe if it gets bought by someone who is actively trans supportive uh somewhere down the line then maybe we can sort of uh be more supportive of ongoing harry potter projects uh but as it stands right now things like hogwarts legacy or any more fantastic beast movies that I doubt will ever get made. <laughs> uh, you can't support them without uh, without it being um, directly harmful to trans people and, and sending a message to trans people around you and in your life that um, that uh, you, you care more about your entertainment than you do about our rights. And it's just sort of a, a line of solidarity uh, that is important to draw. That was what my tweet was about. And then the one she retweeted was me just saying, but I also don't begrudge anyone who still loves Harry Potter and still enjoys uh, like Harry Potter stuff uh, that they've already bought. Like for me, for example, like quite literally, I believe it's right over here. Uh, I don't know where they are my my shelf of way too many DVDs. Like, literally, right here on my shelf, I have all my Harry Potter DVDs up until the ninth movie, the ninth Fantastic Beast movie, because that's right before she came out as a horrible transphobe. Um, I have all those DVDs, and I have all the books, and I'm saying I don't begrudge anyone for having those or for still caring about those. I know it's sometimes it's hard for me to go back and watch those or look at them anymore uh, because of J.K. Rowling, but if someone still finds joy and love in carrying them, I don't begrudge them that and don't say, like, you're hateful or anti-trans or anything for having those things. Um, that, that literally was my take <laughs> like i don't begrudge anyone for for still liking harry potter uh just you can't support it going forward with more money and attention um if you wish to be supportive of uh the trans community uh as a whole that was my take that was my thought i don't think that that's all that radical of a concept uh and that's what she retweeted me about so that's just like of all the things <laughs> that she could have gone after me for she went after me for like my mildest of takes about her uh which i find kind of funny 
Like, I didn't talk anything about her books or any criticism of her work. Like, I could have talked about the problematic tropes that she has in her book or the, like, very harmful view of feminism. I mean, like, what was up with everyone laughing at Hermione trying to, like, fight for Hellsell's rights? Like, that still bugs me to this day. I mean, looking back and knowing J.K. Rowling's politics now, I guess we kind of very clearly know what was going on with that sort of feminism message with Hermione and everyone laughing at her now, just being aware of J.K. Rowling's very neoliberal politics. But um, at the time, it still bugged me. Now I'm very much aware of why. There's a lot I could have criticized about her work, but I also know that like it meant a lot to me and it meant a lot to other people. And so I'm not going to try and take that away from people to try to ignore the fact that these were works of art that meant a lot to us um, and felt like it was accepting uh, of us at a time where we needed that acceptance in our lives. Um, and sadly, J.K. Rowling has made that clear that that was not her intention. Uh, that is not who she wished to include in her magical fantasy world. Uh, but you know, uh, it meant something to us. And so I could have been critical of all of that stuff, but I just wanted to say, I'm not gonna begrudge anyone for still finding uh, something meaningful to them within her work if they already own it. Just don't help a transphobe going forward. I mean, let's look at her tweet. It's weird, right? About like pure think or whatnot, which sounds like her failed attempt to sound Orwellian, claiming victimization that people might do the opposite of what I said and burn her books instead of supporting them. And their pet dogs too, apparently, cause trans supportive people like to kill pets in defiance of transphobes? What is it with these people and like pet hatred? It's it's very weird. I didn't I did not know that this was like a thing. I guess. But anyways, J.K. Rowling, maybe it's that people are so hurt by you that they don't want to have your work in their house anymore. This is something I spoke about in uh, this video that should be on screen right now about how turfs and gender critical people are often privileged white women who often only view womanhood through their privileged version of womanhood. That by somehow not having a platform, not having people read every single word that they put out, people maybe not agreeing with every single thing you say and rejecting your hate when you target a marginalized community and not giving you endless amounts of money and a megaphone to speak, to them not having all of that is tantamount to being attacked and marginalized without actually understanding what marginalization actually is and only viewing it through how they are sometimes, you know, sexistly attacked as women, but are ultimately also still privileged in many other ways and so only view any criticism against them as somehow sexism against them. And so that's what J.K. Rowling sees trans people speaking out against her hate as, as sexism against her, when really we're just talking about her privilege and how she's targeted a marginalized community. Which, by the way, she still has all the privilege. I mean, despite having made two failing terrible movies and whatever the hell Cursed Child was, J.K. Rowling will still get Warner Brothers support to make more TV shows and movies. I mean, David Zaslav, who's taken everything else off of HBO Max, wants to have more Harry Potter crap, apparently. It's the same, I'm being cancelled for my hate speech, so give me more money and more platforms that you see many right-wing figures using to gain attention while throwing marginalized people under the bus. Well, Rowling, I'll be honest, I'm deeply disappointed in you for not realizing that. And it just goes to show, ultimately, at the end of the day, that, uh, you know, gender critical ideology is not really about anything specific other than being hateful against trans people and not listening to what we have to say, um, the nuance of our arguments, the fact that, you know, for me, for example, I've been very clear about, like, sending harassment to J.K. Rowling is absolutely awful, even though I think she's doing a lot of harm and hate, we should be fighting back and pushing back against her. Um, no, ignore all of that, any of that nuance. Just, you know, retweet me, remove contacts, and send people to harass me. It just, it just really just shows that there's no paying attention to what trans people actually say. I mean, if, if we know this just by the fact they say, like, you can't change sex, and it's like, no, no trans person is saying that we can, like, change our chromosomes or whatever, at least not at this point in, uh, in our technological development, but there's a lot more nuance there than anyone will give us credit for. It's all just about hating trans people and, you know, targeting trans people and not listening to us or actually what we have to say. But having said that, I actually want to focus on two uh, more important things. One, is that my response to all of this was to tweet out something very targeted and saying, hey, JK Rowling, you're doing a lot of harm. You've heard a lot of trans people. Here's some information on why that is the case. And I think that that is probably one of the best responses I could do on Twitter because you ain't gonna win an argument on Twitter. Uh, you can just sort of direct people towards uh, resources that can be helpful. And also point to the fact that um, JK Rowling wants to make an us versus them narrative. Her whole spiel at this point is saying uh, trans women are a danger to cisgender women, which isn't the case. Trans rights and trans liberation 
liberation are a fight for women's rights and women's liberation. And trans rights can only exist in a world that is equal for everybody. The only way that trans people will ever be liberated and ever be equal is if we live in a society that is equal for everybody, trans or not, cisgender women, men, Everybody, people of color, uh, people of different bodies, able people, disabled people, things like that. Um, that's the only way that we will ever exist in a trans equal world. And that's why I always say a fight for trans rights is a fight for everyone's rights because we can only exist in a world where everyone is treated equally. But the last thing that I really, really want to focus on here within all of this is to say that, yes, I did wake up to a lot of harassment and nasty stuff and I'm sure I will achieve more because JK Rowling has put her eye of Sauron on me or her eye of Dolores Umbridge on me whatever whatever Harry Potter metaphor you want to work in there uh <laughs> if I was a cleverer person I would have thought of one but that having been said one thing that heartened me and made me so filled with joy was the amount of kindness that was also sent my way. My DMs were not only filled with horrible people, but I also got so many messages of people just sending me love and kindness and sweet things saying, hey, I know you're probably going to go through it today. Um, so I just want to let you know you're absolutely lovely and amazing. I got that in my tweets. I got people reaching out directly, friends of mine, people in my comment sections on YouTube. Uh, and honestly, that just fills me with so much joy because it reminds me that in the face of hate and bigotry and people trying to divide us, more people are ready to stand up and be with somebody, whether they are trans or not. They see somebody and say, hey, we wish to accept you, make you know that you are like part of our community, are a human being, and are someone that fills us with joy because you all fill me with joy. Um, and, and that just... It always makes me feel so happy to see that in the face of hate, that that is also what I get in response. And honestly, get it in so much more quantities than the hate and vitriol. Um, it, it is honestly just very meaningful to me. I am aware that the reason that I get so much love uh, in the face of moments like this is because I am a very public trans person who has a platform that talks about these things and tries to also spread kindness and love. Um, and I know that that is a privilege that a lot of trans people who also support spreading love and kindness and community um, don't have. They don't have the platform, they don't have the reach um, and community that, that I have as a YouTube creator. So what I will remind all of you is, is that when you do see a trans person, whether they be retweeted by JK Rowling or actively being targeted in much worse ways than, you know, nonsense Twitter drama, um, remember to reach out and tell them that they are loved, that they are accepted, that they're a human being, and that they should be cared for because ultimately that's the most important thing. And moments like this with JK Rowling show me that that is what we can do in response as a community. We can stand in solidarity together and we will stand in solidarity together and that we were always stronger in the face of all of these things. We just have to recognize and realize it and not focus on the hate and awfulness, but focus on that and remind ourselves to do so for everyone in our community, not just the big prominent people like me, um, you know, if I can call myself big and prominent, um, but everybody, everyone in our community deserves love and caring and kindness, especially uh, in the face of bigger tree, but all the time. So I just wish to remind you of all of that. And so I'll end on this. In defiance of the hate sent my way, I ignored Twitter, which I think we should all do, especially now that it's Musk's town. And I went and hung out with friends in a reading of The Christmas Carol over on my friend Sarah's channel. And I got to play Fred, Scrooge's earnestly kind nephew, which I think uh, was very sweet and wonderful that I got cast in him. And I thought it was ironic uh, that I got to play him today because he, through the words of Dickens, an author who Rowling has been compared to, had certain things to say about Scrooge that I thought resonated with this situation. And so I'm going to paraphrase Fred's speech in my terrible British accent. He's a comical old fellow, that's the truth, and not so pleasant as he might be. However, his offenses carry their own punishment. His wealth is of no use to him. He don't do any good with it. He don't make himself comfortable with it. He hasn't the satisfaction of thinking that he is ever going to benefit us with it. I am sorry for him. Who suffers by his ill whims? Himself, always. Here, he takes it into his head to dislike us, and he won't come and dine with us. What's the consequence? I think he loses a very good dinner. People like Rowling have been so lost in hate that it's all they see and are spreading harm, and we need to call that out. But it's also sad. For in this time of year when we cling together in solidarity and remember ourselves as family, whether it be biological, queer, found, or whatever, those people, like Rowling, are left out, lost in the cold, staring in at our warmth, 
that our community will always provide to each other. And I honestly find that sad. But let us not dwell on them because they put themselves out there. For we ourselves have too much joy to focus on for ourselves. So, Merry Holidays and a Happy New Year if you celebrate it. And I'll see you all in my final video of the year. Um, until then, though, my friends, as always, live long and prosper, you beautiful, beautiful people.